what you're seeing here is the bridge. Uh, to me, this bridge symbolizes the relations between the state-run hospitals and the municipalities, because we're going to talk about a group of patients that have been uh, spending a lot of time on uh, high security wards, and they're coming out to society. And municipalities better be ready w when they come. And uh, it is really, really important that we are on the same page and we can... Uh, divide the responsibility between us. So the patients we are talking about are, uh, for, uh, for us, it's uh, mainly men in their 40s. Uh, they struggle with severe mental illness, also with uh, personality disorders uh, like uh, antisocial behavior and such, substance abuse to try to regulate their feelings. And also some of them have a high risk of violent behavior. At least there's a history of violent behavior. But you have to keep in mind that this group uh, is also on the receiving end on, uh, when it comes to violence. Many of our patients are not motivated for treatments, meaning they will not seek out the outpatient treatment. So we have to go uh, and, see, and seek them, or at least the hospital has to do so. Many, but not all, have poor housing skills. So it, it goes without saying, if you have one or more of these uh, things on your checklist, uh, you're going to struggle with uh, keeping your flat if you're lucky enough to, to have one. Um, um, most of our guys have been living a lot in institutions, so they don't have the same uh, aspect of uh, living in an apartment as many others. So in order to keep our uh, patients from ending up on the streets and uh, creating havoc and stir, uh, we have to work together and find a solution for uh, making long-term uh, home solutions. And we're talking about um, scattered flats. And these flats, they're not uh, fortified. This is regular uh, flats. Uh, we want them to have a stable life with fewer crises and less violence concerning their own safety and also neighbors, of course. Less conflict and contact with the police goes without saying as well. Well, that means we want contact with the police, but not in the uh, uh, emergency sense. Reduced symptoms leads to a higher quality of life, or maybe it's the other way around also. The means we, we have is framing the patient with an elaborate plan of intervention. I will get back to the plan quite shortly, but it's, that is basically the framework, which is really important to have. We need to provide the patient with essential support, meaning that all of our patients have different needs and we have to identify those different needs. And we have to be alert when they change. Also, we have to be alert when uh, our patients are having their moments of clarity so we can act swiftly and, and try to make something out of it. Strong relations to the staff is uh, really important as well. We have two kinds of staff here. We have the flexible staff, which I represent. We are the municipality. We work uh, on the follow-up. And then you have the APA staff, which can come from the hospital. Uh, they are the specialists. They are doing the medicine part and the coercion. So we have to be sure on who has the right res uh, responsibility here. We have divided it in this way. The hospital, uh, they practice the coercion, uh, they practice the medicine uh, regime, and they, of course, also do the admission. This hospital, uh, uh, Luis and Badik Sykehus, they um, have three fact teams on the top of the APOS team. The APOS team, they take uh, the guys that, that have the uh, violence risk. And uh, they are serving the three center regions of Oslo city, which contains some 160,000 citizens, just to make it give you a point of reference. The municipality, in this case us, uh, we are on the receiving end. So uh, when the patient is coming out, we need to have the flat in order. We need to have the whole package around uh, the, this person in order. The police also plays a part in this group. But when I say uh, police, it's, it's not uh the, the random police this is uh we we are lucky enough to have our own psychiatric group in the police in oslo they have their own department for that also we have social service here 
and they take care of the economic security because we don't want to lose the flat uh, just because bills haven't been paid. So these four four members uh, make up most of this group. There are others also like the general practice, practitioner and, and such, but we'll uh, maintain focus on this group. The APAS team stands for Ambulatory Psychosis Addiction and Security Team. I'm not sure how many hospitals have a team like this, but it, it works really well with us. They understand the patient and they know the patient uh, well in advance. They have 60 patients in three districts, seven, uh, 20 in each. So in our district, there's 20 of these patients. Uh, they perform individually adapted and integrated treatment, uh, meaning that uh, all patients have different needs. Uh, and they do the outpatient treatment, but also commitment. Not all of our patients are uh, under commitment, but uh, many are. They aim to have less crisis, fewer symptoms, and less violent behavior. And the idea is that with, uh, with framing the, the patient, this could be achieved uh, over time. Flexpo is the team that I represent. Uh, we are a small ambulatory housing team in the municipality of Santan Sögen. Uh, two of our staff are uh, dedicated solely to the APAS uh, patients. So they work a lot with the intervention plan, which I will come back to. We have 70 plus persons uh, with dual diagnosis. Uh, they're coming out of institutions and we are providing flats for them. In the whole of Norway, we are now uh, uh, building down the institution apparatus and we're trying to provide safe, uh, safe adequate housing for people uh, in neighborhoods instead. This is also similar to the fact in an ACT model, of course. Our staff has an emergency key uh, for as a health safety environment measure for these patients. And uh, this is a debated practice. Uh, I don't think it's very familiar within the uh, housing first segment, but it's uh, the way we see it is a necessary thing to have. Uh, we have to uh, have the key in order to check out that our uh, patient is safe. That's, uh, um, uh, plumbing hasn't been tampered with, electricity have, hasn't been tampered with, and also that uh, there's no people there that sh shouldn't uh, or are held there against their will or are occupying the flat, which we sometimes see. So uh, we have a written arrangement between the patient and ourselves, uh, which we have to fill out. And uh, we had uh, help from the legal experts in the council in order to make this uh, happen. So for this group, I, uh, I find it's uh, quite, uh, quite important. We have a long-term follow-up, meaning that uh, we stay with our patients also in good times and also in bad times. So when our patients are recovering uh, from a bad period, they could recover for months and months. We will not pull out. We will still be there and have contact less than before, but we will still have the contact. And I think that is also an uh, important thing to remember that we shouldn't just run after and try to um, try to stop the crisis, but we should always be there uh, as a safety net. This is the luxury part that we have in Oslo. Uh, we have our own psychiatric group that follow up these patients. I think they have 18 uh, persons on their list at the moment. They consist of two legal experts and two investigators. And it's really good for us to have legal experts to lean on uh, when we need help in, uh, in laws, uh, laws questions. We can call them, we can email them, we can easily get in contact with them. They keep oversights on unaccountable and legally insane patients. And it sometimes takes many years in order to make a sentence like that. And the court, before sentencing someone uh, legally insane, they are really, really concerned about every method being tried out bef uh, beforehand. And this method is one of them. So they identify, investigate, and avert crime, and they keep uh, eyes on the regular criminals. They do take part in meetings with us and APAS, and uh, we provide info to each other. Uh, we're really concerned about uh, confidentiality of our patients. So uh, the police, they use the Police Register Act, paragraph 27, and they can then give us information concerning risk assessments, which is really important when we make the, the intervention plan. 
we will not provide them with info that they can use in, on building a case. Uh, that would not be a proper way of doing it, not ethically right. So that was the group. How does this work? We have this detailed plan of intervention, which I will have a deep dive into. We need well-planned discharges from hospital. We need to know at least six months in advance that this patient is coming out. And we have to be there for this patient and we have to get to know the patient when he's, uh, he, uh, he or, her or her are already in the hospital. Uh, we need to know what kind of interests, hobbies, these kind of things as well. What kind of uh, um, people uh, is, are we talking about? We really want to have planned admission and the intervention plan helps us with the planned admission because we don't want to wait until things escalate because things escalate with this, uh, this group, that's for sure. All partners uh, in this group are informed when inconsistencies start to happen with our patients. So everybody involved knows if something has have happened. The police, for instance, if, if they uh, get one of our patients um, in custody, they will call the APOS team and the APOS team will go down there and assess the patient, which is a good thing. And uh, us too, we will also be notified if the, our patient has been, if we haven't seen it in a few days, and we can also notify the police that now we haven't seen him in a few days. The plan of intervention content, this is like the most important tool that we have. Uh, we have all kinds of plans when people are inside the institutions, checklist to see uh, if we have an impending uh, psychosis or violence or something triggering something. This is difficult to do on the outside because it's not clinical. We don't uh, meet the person that much. But we have uh, pointed out all the red flags based on the, on the st studies beforehand. So we know what kind of signs to look for uh, when, we, when we go meet the patient. The Flexible team do, that do the follow-up, we will uh, visit our patient every day and the whole week. And uh, the APOS team, they will have more scheduled visits uh, with therapy and uh, medicine and such. So when the flexible team visit the patient and if we notice one of these anomalies, which could be quite specific things like uh, our patient is starting to whisper uh, or is dressed in a particular way, then we know that and so, uh, uh, a psychosis might be uh, on the horizon. That is when we uh, have to react. Uh, if we miss those signs and, and the days goes by, then after a while, it's quite obvious that uh, this patient is sick and uh, in a need of care. So we have to in intervene before that happens. So what we do is to call the, the APOS team and then they will come and assess the patient. And often they, they can come in like 20 minutes, which is also a luxury. They will come and assess the patient and they will call the hospital that will uh, make ready a bed. And then we will uh, try to encourage our patient to seek the hospital, walk or drive up to the hospital with him or her. And uh, when our patient then, this is the best case scenario, when our patient then is um, in the hospital, the flexible team will go to the apartments and clean up whatever have happened in the apartment. We will clean it up and make it nice and cozy so it's okay to come back again and start all over. And this is an important uh, thing to notice that we have this ability and we, we have this ability due to the key. And also we will fetch stuff from the apartment like a headset or clothing and stuff that our patient needs. And then we never know if the patient will stay three days at the hospital or six months. That depends on how, how early we manage to intervene. The, uh, the content in, in, the, in the plan also says who to call on what different scenario that's, that is occurring. So we don't have to call uh, 911 uh, or the hospital and, and, and try to be put over to the right person. We are on speed dial to everyone. So, and, and this is really securing the workflow. Uh, the medicine regime is uh, strictly uh, described in this um, content. 
And is there something about every patient? What kind of medicine at what, what time? And what to do when uh, the patient isn't there to receive it? In some cases, we have to call the police immediately uh, if the antipsychotic drug doesn't meet the doesn't end up with the patient. If it doesn't open the door, we need to call them. In other cases, we can wait a few days. This depends on uh, how, th how things are working. So it's really individually adapted. Drug control is also a thing that we assess. And uh, we, the Flexpo team, we are going to the hospital with our patients performing the drug control. And uh, also we can sometimes uh, follow the, our patient to the hospital for medicine, but usually it's the APAS team that comes and, and, and provides it. The plan always have to be up to date. That is also important. So if it's just laying in a desk drawer is of no use. Uh, whenever something happened an inconsistency, everybody in the group uh, gets to know it immediately and uh, everybody knows how to react and what to do uh, in order to uh, tighten the grip again. We have seen now that we have patients that uh, many believe would never be able to live in their own flat. They were proposed institu institutions for the rest of their lives. We have uh, several of those cases that have now been living in their apartments for two to three years with this program around them. So it works a lot and we have a focus on this now because when they are staying calm, it relieves resources that can be spent on uh, housing the broader group of home homeless. And, and that is the whole case here. The road to success, it's, it's not always successful, of course, but uh, when it is, uh, it's because we understand the patient, we understand the needs and we understand what we have to do and how things change. Also personal suitability when it comes to the staff is really important. If you don't have a good chemistry with your patient, then we have to do a swap. You can't go and seek a person every day at work, someone uh, you don't match with and imagine how it is that somebody seeks you on your door and you don't like the person. So we, we can't work that way. We have to do a, a switch over when, when the chemistry doesn't work. Hence, our staff have to be really authentic. And uh, in our case, our staff is really authentic and also they are really creative and positive, which is all really important uh, factors in this. Local knowledge on neighborhoods, that is something that the hospitals they don't have. That is the municipality's uh, responsibility. So our staff in the flexible team, they have to seek out the other neighbors and get to know them and, and take um, every information they can get. So for instance, if uh, a neighbor is calling me or texting me, I always have to take that serious. Uh, you can't neglect uh, what the neighbors are complaining about because Neighbors doesn't choose their neighbors, we do. We choose to put these people in these neighborhoods according to what apartments are, are suitable for, from what we have. So within that is a big responsibility. Mutual understanding and complementary roles is important here. And I think the Flexpo team has a more uh, appealing role because uh, we are more like the caretakers while the APAS and the police, they are more like the coercion part. So we have a little bit of a good cop, bad cop situation, but uh, our, our role in Flexpo is to try to soothe this. So uh, we, we try to make it easier for, for the others to uh, assist the patients. A credit card is really important for the staff to have. Uh, I'm not sure if the, if my boss agree, but uh, buying a hot dog after the drug control makes a drug control uh, a cozy event. So we always do that. And uh, we always try to go out in the cafeterias and do social training. And it's a small amount that really can do the big difference. The stuff you see here is, uh, is basically the interaction between the state-run hospital and the municipality. And 
this works very well with us because they're easy to get in a hold of, they're easy to, to talk with, and it's unbureaucratic. We do have uh, uh, challenges because uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, especially when it comes to social protection, which is on the very top, uh, keeping the patient and the neighbors safe. Nighttime, of course, uh, if something happened, the neighbors are telling us that there's a lot of stir and we put in some private security guards uh, around these um, addresses. Complicated law, the forensic field is really complicated. Fortunate for us, we have the, both the APOS team and uh, the, the police who are really into this with their legal experts. Don't get personal, meaning that eventually someone will get under your skin, that's for sure. And then you have to take a break. So let's summarize then. We have the APOS team that uh, have the coercion and the medicine. We have the flexible team that uh, do the daily activities. The police psychiatric group is in the background and the social service makes sure that the economy is functioning and the bills are being paid. What is the missing piece here? The missing piece is activity. So our group, they are now, uh, among other things, making bird boxes because uh, we read a report that said bird shipper is beneficial for, um, uh, for our mental health. So now our group are making, uh, are increasing the mental health or enhancing the mental health of the population in Oslo city, because you can find hundreds of these boxes scattered around in the city center. Among other things, we also keep the city river clean so the salmon can travel easily upstream. And I think it, what's appealing for the group is the ruggedness of being in the river and actually dragging out uh, bikes and stuff that they find. And we're all coastal nations here and we have an environmental responsibility. And within this group, there lays a formidable workforce. So if you can talk to each other and look at the resources, there is a lot to be done when it comes to this kind of work. We're also uh, refurbishing computers and these things, and we can see that people who have been long-term in institutions being really sick, they flourish, and, and we can uh, see the, self of, uh, the sense of profiancy is growing in each and every person that participates in this. So activity is, is of key uh, importance. Due to the lack of time, I will uh, stop right here. And uh, I've chosen a picture on the last slide that show you that anything is possible also with this group. Thank you so much.